Hello everyone, and welcome to the third and final part of Loveland's Insider's Guide. If you haven't already, go check out parts A and B, linked in the description. You'll need some of the things I say in those videos to understand a lot of the things I say in this video. Today, we'll finish talking about Loveland Basin. Let's begin part C of an Insider's Guide to Ski Resorts, Loveland. In part B, it was discussed that you can take Chair 4 up to its mid-station, and then take Zip Trail across to Chair 8. The lower part of Zip Trail, here, is a nice wide groomer through the trees. It was discussed in Part B that the upper part is a bit of a catwalk, but doesn't require too much pushing. Off of the middle part of Zip Trail, you can access East Ropes. The sister to West Ropes, it is a glade that brings you down to either Chair 8 or this black run called The Face. The Face is a short little mogul run. It does get very torn up, so there are commonly bare spots and exposed rocks. At the bottom of The Face, You'll take off your skier board and walk through this pedestrian tunnel under Interstate 70. The tunnel drops you back at the base area to catch Chet Stream or Chair 2. Because it connects the far area with the base area, the face is not a lappable run, but rather a shorter way to get back to the base for lunch or at the end of the day. The top of Chair 8 is the open tundra, like discussed in Part B. However, the runs off of Chair 8 are a lot more easy to find and follow than those off of Upper Chair 4. Awesome starts off as a flat catwalk on this upper section here. It is a really nice blue run in this section here, but then from here all the way down to chair 8 is a long run out. You can get through the run out with minimal pushing or skating, but it requires a lot of speed in the short good section. Awesome is used more as a run out for these blacks than an actual good lap. The main run in chair 8's pod is Chet's Run. Chet's Run and Zip Basin Street, which are both nice blue cruisers, are just on either side of the lift. Go to the skier's left to go to Chet's Run, or go to the skier's right to go to Zip Basin Street. Both flow into a nice wide blue groomer under the lift at the bottom, here. Off of Chet's Run, you can access these three blacks, the Plunge, In the Mood, and Hook'em Horns. They are all pretty wide open meadow type of skiing, where you can usually find some nice powder. They run out to Awesome, so keep some speed up towards the bottom. Aside from the face, there's one other way to leave the Chair 8 pod. The lower part of the run zippity split was discussed in part B. Today, we're discussing the part from chair 8 to the mid station of 4. Now, coming off of chair 8, the very first part of zippity split requires pushing or skating up a bit of a hill. Past that, zippity split is a catwalk. It has a secondary uphill portion right here around Tickler Gulch, so keep up your speed going into that area. People forget that this blue run Tickler Gulch is accessed from zippity split, so this is one of the runs where you'll rarely see other people as you ski down it. Tickler Gulch typically has very few tracks on powder days. Now, skipping all the way over to chair 9 here, let's talk advanced terrain. Aside from a couple of double blacks at Chet Stream, the entirety of the expert terrain at Loveland is accessed by chair 9. The lower section of chair 9's terrain, our bowl and number 4 headwall, are in the windswept tundra where there's no designated route. All of the runs above those two typically hold snow better, so there's typically less scrub brush poking up through. This entire top section is known as the ridge. The continental divide goes along the ridge, so if you're on top of the ridge looking down the other side, the snow you're looking at will eventually end up in the Gulf of California, while the snow you're standing on will end up in the Gulf of Mexico. Chair 9 drops you in the middle of the ridge. From there, you can go right down Primer Patrol Bowl here, or you can traverse and hike along the ridge in either direction to get to some of the less tracked advanced and expert terrain. Generally, the farther out you get from the top of chair 9, the less tracked the snow will be. There's one blue run from chair 9. It is Rookie Road. It requires a traverse across the ridge a little bit, but then becomes a quite nice blue groomer. However, if you are a blue skier, I would not recommend Rookie Road as a lapping trail. Chair 8 and chair 6 are great lapping areas for intermediate skiers. Chair 9, going all the way up the Continental Divide, gets extremely windy. When there's a storm, this wind, combined with the snow, can cause near zero visibility conditions. Unless you've skied the route you're planning to take beforehand, I would not recommend going up chair 9 in a snowstorm. When there is good weather, however, there are really great views down both sides of the divide. The headwalls off of the ridge are extremely steep. The single blacks such as Jelly Roll, Primer Bowl, and Castle Rock are typically just extremely steep. All of the runs up top, but especially the single blacks, are great to get big turns and powder. The double blacks, such as Patrol Bowl and Super Bowl, are even steeper than the single blacks. The extreme terrain, such as Wild Child, 
typically is as steep as the double blacks or steeper, but will have obstacles such as cliffs, chutes, or rocks. Wild Child specifically has a cliff type drop in. All of these north side trails off of the ridge up to gate 2 north will bring you back either directly to chair 9 or to Apollo, which will bring you to chair 9. The south side trails up to gate 3 south will bring you back to chair 9. Wild Child and Porcupine Saddle, accessed from gate 4 south, bring you back to Bennett's Bowl, from which you can access the mid mountain trio. If you hike across the ridge past gate 1 north, you'll find the Ridge Cat pickup. For the Ridge Cat, you have to have a Ridge Cat pass. It's free, so just ask for a Ridge Cat pass when you buy your lift ticket. Ridge Cat serves more great powder runs all along the north side of the ridge. All the runs up to gate 4 north will drop you onto Zippity Split, from which you can traverse all the way back across to chair 9. Gate 5 north, which serves rock shoots and this unnamed extreme terrain, will bring you down to Awesome, which takes you back to chair 8 or the face run back to the base. If you have any questions about specific runs in the whole of Loveland, but especially any questions about the ridge terrain, check out the pinned comment. And with that, we are done with Loveland. Of course, thank you all so much for watching. As always, please leave any questions down below. All my love, I'm out.